welcome to another episode of the Theater Professor Vidcast. My name is Terry Danich Kimiak II, and I am the Theater Professor. This wonderful Tuesday, we will be continuing on our exploration of Sketch Club, the iPad app that allows you to share your drawings easily. If you remember last week, we talked a little bit about how to adjust the brush settings. We are going to look a little bit at some of the other brushes because some of the brushes don't have the same settings as the brush tool. And uh, we'll see how far we get, but uh, that's what we want to look at. And if we get a little farther, there's a couple other things. You know, if I, if I move through this uber quick, uh, there are a couple other things that we can look at. Like always, if you are watching this on YouTube and you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. I like to uh, share these tutorials as often as I can, usually one to two a week um, on, on those hopping weeks. I may even get in three, but that doesn't happen quite as often. And of course, if you are watching this on the website, become a member. It is a free membership at www.thetheaterprofessor.com. You just join the artist's membership. If you want to step up, then you can become a patron member, and that helps run the website and allows me to do all these wonderful tutorials. Well, I think they're wonderful. I've, I've, I've had some comments where some people don't quite like what I do, but that's fine. You know, we, we all have our own opinions. We all have our own beliefs on what, uh, what is good and what is bad. So let's look. You can see that I've got this open, and we are looking at the menu under the tools. And we've already looked at the brush, but we're going to look at some of the other ones here. So let's start with, well, before we do blur, let me go ahead and lay down some paint. What color do we want today? Well, of course, we want TARDIS blue, always. That might be a little too bright. So let's come in and take it down a little bit. There we go. Oh, I'm on airbrush, apparently. That's not the brush that I want. So I'm going to switch over to a nice paintbrush of sorts. Uh, let's grab, you know, I'm so picky on my paintbrushes. It's a, it's a bad, there we go. I'm going to lay down. Let's make this a little bigger. So needy. There we go. And maybe grab a second color so that we have two colors here because we are going to be doing a little bit of blending and stuff. So there we go. Okay, let's grab the blur tool. Now, if you notice, when you click here, the blur tool doesn't have all those settings that the brush tools has. It only has size, strength, opacity, and motion. We know what size is. We know what opacity is. Strength is how big the pushes or how strong the pushes. So if we took it down to six, you can see a little bit of blurring happening. If we take it up to 100 and come down here, you can see the difference in the blur. Okay, much stronger blur on the bottom there. So let's take that blur down. And the other thing is motion. And I don't know what motion does because that's something that I've never seen in one of these. So I'm going to take, oh, okay. So what's going to happen is see how it, when I brush, there's movement. So if I just brush one way, I'm starting to pull it out. Okay, so I'm blurring, but I'm also moving the paint. If I turn that motion off and go right below that, you can see all I'm doing is blurring it. I'm not pulling it. Okay, you can see the, so you can see the difference between those two right there. So that's the blur tool if you want to blur a couple of colors together, if you want to blur outside edges. Next up we have the eraser tool. The eraser tool actually can be done very much like a paint tool. You can ch uh, pick what type of eraser head you want. So for example, let's grab this one right here. Let me pull up my, that's not what I want. Dim that, there we go. No, silly, there we go. I wanted my size to be available on the bottom, so I'll bring, now, so you can see, you can, you can use different erasing, which can give you some really nice edge effects. Another really cool thing that you can do with this is, for example, say you have multiple layers, and I'm gonna go ahead and lay down paint on one layer, let's lay down. Actually, what we'll do is we'll grab our fill tool. There we go. And now we come over the layers. I'm going to then grab a second layer and I'm going to paint over top with a brush with a different color, say green. So here you can see I'm covering up the under layer. But then you can grab the eraser tool with a textured. Let's grab a different texture, something that's really, there we go. And by erasing back a little bit what you have what you have down, you can start to reveal what's underneath. So that's kind of fun, okay? So that I, I always like any program that allows the eraser to have texture 
or you know a pattern of some sort I always find is much more enjoyable than one that's you know just a single straight line so being able to do something like this and there we go look at that all right so that's the eraser again very much like the brush I'm not going to go through all the settings but if you wanted to you could I mean you could you could hit the edit button up here and you can see all the settings are there so definitely play with it if you want to that's fine next up we have fill and fill is exactly that it fills your screen screen with a color you can see all you have is opacity and threshold and consider all layers so if we go ahead and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, turn off those two layers and let's go ahead and fill this with a nice light pinkishy purpley boom there we go we have a fill but fill can be used other ways as well so let's say you're doing a drawing and I'm again adjusting a lot of things here let's actually use something that's hard-edged and you'll see why so let's say we're doing a drawing and I'm just doing kind of doing geometric shapes right now and you'll see why in a second and maybe a triangle right here okay so now what you can do is you can actually fill in each of those specific areas with different colors so if I and there it is okay now if I flip to a new layer if I have consider all layers turned on it will actually read the layers underneath so let's grab this orange here and I tap and it's even though it's on a different layer because now what I can do look at this I can turn off that layer and my fill is still there so that's kind of cool and then the other thing is you have threshold here so if we're using say a pencil which might have some breakup in it pencil texture oops let me use um, a black for that there we go Let me zoom in a little bit and you can see that with this pencil texture there might be some breakage happening so if I come in and use my fill tool now we'll see how much breakage there is notice how it did the entire the yeah, let me zoom out it did the entire screen but if I were to undo that and if we adjust the threshold to like zero now it stays within that if we come back in and say adjust the threshold to 20 to 30 that that threshold did not work it was too high so let's take it down to say 20 ish still too much and it's one of those things that you have to kind of play with let's go to seven there we go it stayed in it but you can see there's some pixelation on the outside so one of the things that I would probably end up doing is kind of playing until I found the perfect setting so that's the fill tool uh, it's great if you're like creating comic characters or doing you know very um, you're, you're creating images that are quick fills next up we have the pen tool let me go ahead and clear a bunch of these do 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 oh that's not what I wanted to do there we go and you can see if you slide the layer to the left you get some options of copy down merge down delete we're just deleting everything deleted and then we'll just add a few layers to play with there we go so next up we have the pen tool and let's switch back to black and it looks like a pen <laughs> now you can see the settings are very different here calligraphy you've got uh, you can do a dashed line you can do dotted lines a fountain pen again these are great if you're doing comic books okay I think somebody asked me that on one of my one of my uh, I don't remember maybe it was an email don't forget you can email me oh that's a weird one what's a thinner so <laughs> that's weird okay so that's the pen tool got a bunch of things in here pixels if you're into pixel art this is really cool I'm gonna turn this up pretty big but you can create pixel images you know just like the old uh, Atari and the old Nintendo let's change then this to red 
Let me zoom out. <laughs> we can create some cool eyes. Oops, let's go back to black. And depending on the size brush you have, that's what how big the pixel is. Go back to red. So if I were to take and reduce my size. And there we go. We're creating a nice pixel face. <laughs> I don't know who this guy is, but he's creepy looking. So that's pix that's the pixel brush. One of the few programs that has a pixel brush, which is really cool. Okay, procedural. Now, oh, jumping back up to pixel, if you look in the settings, you can adjust, you can make them triangle pixels, you can make them circle pixels, or cell pixels, okay? You can adjust size, like very specific sizes here, one, two, four, eight. You can adjust the inset. So let me go to a bigger one. Okay, see that? You can adjust whether or not it's 3D. I don't think all of them. Um, there we go, just the squares. There you go, so now you're doing 3D versions of it. So that one's really, really kind of fun to play with. Okay, next up we have procedural, and these are some of the sketchy brushes that you can use. So if I zoom in, let me zoom in a little bit. You can look in the settings here. That's bristles, you can do a double helix. What else they've got in here? They've got um, drippers, fur. Fur's actually really kind of cool. You can see it creates a nice furry texture. You've got uh, grass, particles, rake, ribbon. The, um, and if you, you can scroll down, obviously, scaffolding. You've got, uh, what else we got? We got stipply, web, and smooth, and sketchy. Sketchy is actually pretty decent. If you're doing quick sketches, let me turn that off. You know. You can see, and as you go back and forth, it can become kind of a shady brush. I have no idea what I'm creating right now. I'm just kind of playing with it. Okay. So I found that the sketchy brushes are really fun. Uh, you can do it with this. You can. There's an actual just sketchy brush, which is pretty much this but it's just, you know, the sizes. You can smooth across strokes. You've got something similar in the smooth brush. You can see here, again, um, the smooth brush is a little little trickier. For me, is a little trickier to play with. Okay, it comes out a little light. I'm not real happy with how it works. Uh, you know, you could adjust the fall off. You can smooth across strokes. But um, I really like the sketchy. Let me clear out some of these. Oops, wrong, wrong button, wrong button. Scroll button, scroll button, one, two, one, two. Uh, my, my ode to Homestar Runner and Strong Bad. Come back in here, look at the sketchy. Again, sketchy is one of my favorites. Adjust the size up a little bit. And you just kind of play with it. I like the little shadowings that it, do, it does in the, the middles. Of course, you could always go and use the sketchy in procedural as well, which I find to be a little better. And then you've got smudge, which is smudging. And if you look up here, the settings that you got, this is nice because you can actually choose to use a very specific type of smudge tool. I mean, if you look at that, that almost looks like you're smudging pencil right there. Okay, you can adjust the size, strength, the spacing. Okay, uh, you can, the orientation, and whether or not it's pulling the paint as well. And you can see right there, we're pulling paint along. You've got text. I'm not going to talk about text. It's letters, right? So if you, you know, put something in, uh, and you put letters all over the place. And then vectors. 
vectors. If you don't know vectors, it's like what you use in Illustrator. Um, I don't use it that much because I'm more of kind of a, I prefer the sketchy and being able to sketch it out. It's kind of give you an idea what the sketchy field does. I'm not going to save these changes. I'm going to jump out here. I was kind of messing around with it. Let me turn on the layer that I did the sketching in. Turn off the other layers and you can see it here. Bring up the opacity. I did this with the sketch. And again, it's a nice way to rough out an idea, like what you're thinking about. And then what you can do is when you're done, you can take and lower that opacity, put it under a layer that you're already working or that you want to do the actual inking on. And you can see I started to ink and play around. I have no idea. All I could think of when I was drawing this is this guy was on some deserted island somewhere and uh, was lost. So <laughs> I don't know what I'm creating. But that's all of the tools you have in here. The brush and the eraser are the two of the more complicated ones. After that, the settings are very simple and um, very easy to use, even for the beginner. You know, if you've got a son or daughter who wants to get into this and start playing with it, you know, you can hand them this, give them the sketchy or use the proce procedural sketchy, and you can let them kind of wail away on creating an image. And, you, you know, it's not that difficult. You're not having to adjust a ton of settings. Like, what am I? Oh, yeah, paint bucket. That's what I'm in right now. Three settings total. Okay. Well, that's going to be it for this week. Next week, we're going to look at, uh, we're going to get a little more uh, into the layers, I think. The layers can be so important as, a, you, you know, you see this image here. I've got, you know, five layers I'm working on, and each of them does something very specific. Two are turned off because I haven't gotten into them yet, but you've got inking and things like that. So that's what we'll look at next week is the layers and how to use the layers and, and adjust layers. There's a, a ton of information in regards to layers and what you can do. So, all right, that's it for this week. My name, like always, is Terry Dana Jakimiak II. I'm the theater professor. Thank you guys for coming out, checking out the YouTube channel or checking out the website. You guys are fabulous. And um, if there is something that you want me to focus on, go ahead and leave a comment. I'm always willing. I know I've got a couple of people who have wanted me to take a look at Corel Painter and kind of dissect it a little bit. So I may be moving into that after I finish my Paintstorm Studio uh, tutorials that I'm doing on Fridays. But, uh, but if there's something that you specifically want to see, leave a comment. You know, let me know. Let this guy know because he wants to do whatever it is you want him to do. That's my announcer voice. One of these days, I'll actually do some announcing. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. All right, that's it. Thank you so much. I'm the theater professor, and I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Take care. <laughs>